what's up everybody welcome back to the channel it's your girl colors and i am back with another video and today's video is going to be about my 30 and 31 week bump date so if you are interested in hearing about what's been going on for these past like two weeks or so just keep on watching so as you can see this video is going to be about two weeks of my bump date smashed into one for one because there's not a lot had been going on and two i just think it was better to spread out from my last bump date so i just decided to put two together so um it's a chance that this video is probably going to be longer than my other bump date so uh sorry about that in advance but everything in this video that i'm going to be talking about isn't going to be in order i'm going to tell you that now because my memory is bad and i am coming down with the serious case of pregnancy brain so I might be bouncing back and forth but as long as I'm giving you the information about what happened within these two weeks that's all that matters so yeah because this video is gonna be long let's just go ahead and go into the first thing <laughs> so the biggest thing that has stand out to me within these last two weeks is that I have been extremely impatient emotional cranky if you have seen my last video you would know this because i have been extremely uncomfortable with my sleep this is something that i said before but it, it has gotten worse getting worse is that a word no it has gotten worse <laughs> when you go so long without sleep you get restless you can't think straight and then i'm starting to cramp a lot so um one of the things that i have to do to start to get comfortable is to make like a little fork so what i do is i would stack maybe about four or five pillows to the side on my couch and actually place my ottoman <laughs> extremely close to the couch but not touching the couch and i would literally leave, leave a gap <laughs> between my couch and the ottoman and literally drop my stomach inside of it that's just the best thing that is working out right now i think since i have been doing that i have been feeling a little bit better i'm not gonna say i am 100 percent but i can feel myself starting to jump back into my typical self i am starting to get a couple more hours of sleep so i feel like things aren't as bad as they were but you know how pregnancy goes you can feel one way one moment next way feel another so it is what it is but we only have a couple more weeks to go roughly like a month according to fetal medicine and the only thing we can do at this point is kind of truck along and deal with things as it comes so yeah that is the biggest thing the next thing that has happened within these two weeks is that i did go to fetal medicine uh in my last bump day i kind of talked about that i would be going to see fetal, fetal medicine and i would be asking him a couple of questions in regards to like my ob constantly doing cervical checks and stuff like that so I did bring that up in conversation when I went to go see him and he said that there's really no pro in continuously having cervical checks on top of what he was already doing because everything that has happened or is going to happen at this point is going to happen and there's nothing that no one can do to stop it but to give the steroid shot to prepare the baby to come early if she chooses to but doing the cervical checks could potentially irritate the cervix at this point more than help the cervix so uh actually since my last video which i believe was at 29 weeks i haven't seen that specific doctor and don't get me wrong I do not have a problem with going to see that doctor again it's just that I know that if I do go back to him I just gotta let him know like yo I don't want to do a cervical chats and it's just a simple conversation but one of the things that happened at fetal medicine was that he told me that my cervix actually got a little bit longer than it typically was which was surprising because I missed like two nights of taking my progesterone suppositories which was actually rewarding to hear because obviously we don't want her to come too early so yeah that was a good thing another thing i got her weight checked at that time because they didn't remember that they actually checked it two weeks prior um, so they decided to check the weight again when i got it checked two weeks prior roughly um she was at 2.7 
seven pounds and now she is at 3.9 pounds <laughs> so she has jumped in two weeks time and that is good to hear because I haven't been gaining any more weight in the last couple of weeks or so so I've been steadily at the 181 range so being that she is gaining weight means that she is taking all my food child and I am okay with that because I am trying to be snatched when she come out so <laughs> the least I can work off the better uh I did get the fetal fiber nectin test done and that did come back negative so at this point no need for the steroid shot the last two things is that he said that the head was still down that he don't believe that she will be moving from being head down because she's always been head down and she has gotten slightly lower so he don't believe that she would be turning anytime soon but he did notify me that this upcoming appointment which is this friday i am filming this video on a monday that that will be my last appointment so that is kind of exciting scary at the same time yeah that is what happened when i went to fetal medicine the next thing that's happened between these two weeks is that I am continuously working on my DIY crafts for the baby shower, which is in like, what, a week and a half now. It's actually going to be on the 26th of January, so I am not nowhere near done. I am in progress, child. Um, I thought I was going to be a lot further, but dealing with this grass if you've seen the last video you have seen that I was working on my DIY chairs which I am loving the way they're turning out it's just that uh one of the wall pieces that I'm working on for the background it's taking a lot longer than I thought it would and it's not allowing me to like move forward because once I finish that I will be pretty close to done because that is the biggest part and I can focus on other aspects of it but the downside of dealing with greenery is that my house is looking a little bit crazy with grass everywhere so <laughs> yeah that is that another thing that I've noticed is that I am getting the saggy boob syndrome like I don't know what is wrong like I'm not used to having boobs and I don't know appreciate that my boobs are sitting on my stomach like look not to be like weird why is this like you can't why why is this a thing <laughs> oh lord why is that a thing that is not cute why is my boobs sitting on my stomach i already can't breathe child and then got my boobs on the stomach like that's not cute but that is kind of segue me into the fact that I am not liking the ideas of wearing bras like I am not that person who is like that naked person and likes to walk around or whatever and this and that with nothing on but come nighttime child I don't want no shirt I don't want no bra I just want my panties and that's about it <laughs> I can only imagine when baby gets here and I am in the postpartum stage. You know how they say they're going to be wearing diapers and stuff like that? Yep. I'm just going to be having no bra and diapers. I'm going to be like this late. I seen this picture on Instagram the other day and I texted it <laughs> to my husband and I said, be aware. <laughs> I don't even know who these people are, but they put it on Instagram, so they must don't care. But you see this lady? You see her? That is going to be me living my best life. I'm just saying, like, prepare. And I don't care who sees it, if they're going to come in my house or whatever. I am going to be living my best life in my woman diaper. And because <laughs> I can only imagine how it's going to feel after the fact. And I'm already, like, hating clothes right now. It's like everything is making me feel very claustrophobic and it's very weird for me because I'm not the person who's going to be taking off their bra each night sleeping naked. I don't even care if it's a case of like after sex and stuff like that. I am the person that's running and jumping and putting on clothes. Like I do have to have clothes on and now it's like I don't want to wear this. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm getting saggy boobs. Oh, that kind of reminds me. Another thing that's been going on is that I've been getting 
like nipple spasms is that a thing like i've been getting like sharp pains in my nipples but it's like when it does come it's like staying a little bit longer and then it goes away and then it comes back i don't know if that's like a warning sign of milk coming soon but that would be exciting if it's because of milk because milk coming out your boobs is pretty cool so another thing i have mentioned is that i have been cramping which is true so when i've been cramping i've been having a lot of back pains and pelvic pains and lightning vagina <laughs> And what I mean by lightning vagina is that I've been having these like sharp random pains like just hit my vagina area and it's just like ooh. I would get these lightning like moments where it's just like that whole area gets really sore. So I think I'm gonna start freezing pads and getting like that witch hazel. I don't know. Cause I don't think it'll be good to just get water or what it or is that okay. I don't know. Let me know about that if it will just be okay to do water because of all the stuff that i've been going through like not sleeping well uh having like pelvic and back cramps and uh random stomach spasms and stuff i have been toying with the idea to see a chiropractor so i think i'm gonna go to try within the next week or two to get a massage or see a chiropractor or probably both to kind of get me relaxed because maybe that is another reason why I'm not sleeping well and maybe I'm just so tensed up that I just need that relaxation and release so um now that I'm talking about it more I'm a little bit more anxious to try it so I am definitely going to be looking into that and if I do, I will let you guys know. Another big thing that has happened is that we have done birthing classes. We just did that this past Saturday and it was kind of exciting and motivating at the same time because I mean a lot of the things that you are being told or taught about in the birthing classes is probably things you already know if you are a person that is a big researcher but it's very good very 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 good for you to bring your partner along to hear half of the stuff that you may have already heard plus building knowledge on top of it because what happens when you go to the burden center is that they build powerpoints you have somebody right there that you can you ask questions right then and there you know they was given visuals about what contractions look like for my husband when he would see the pictures of the internal of what's happening with baby when contractions and stuff happen or when the spasm and things like that happen um he wouldn't understand why they would hurt or why it seems like maybe to him at moments that I was being dramatic, but um, I think for him seeing the visuals, it have made him more attentive to uh, my pain, <laughs> I guess you could say, because they'll show like um, videos of the actual like contractions and the spasms. Also, they show video of like the cervix opening at what level. Now, this is one thing that I did know, but I didn't come to the realization until I went to the bourbon class. I know baby has to come out, but I don't realize that Pretty much, you gotta look at your cervix reaching 10 and then your vagina hole is like reaching a 10. So it's like, you're going through two levels of stretching. And I haven't really looked at it like that, even though I know that the baby has to come through. In my mind, I guess I always assume that once your cervix is are already dilated, that the baby wouldn't necessarily has to push through because it would already like be already open but that's not the case from the visual that they gave me basically the baby has to like push through the cervix <laughs> as well as push through the vagina hole so you can meet your crowning in the ring of fire situation which i don't appreciate but the baby is here <laughs> so she's gonna have to come out anyway but stuff like that it puts everything in perspective of the things that you already been told so for guys they don't understand a lot of things in the same way that we do because we experience periods we experience cramping and stuff like that and i was surprised how much he 
started to gain knowledge and started to kind of get into it. And now I notice that every time uh, I look uncomfortable, David automatically start doing some of the massages and stuff that he saw in the birthing class. He only remember one child, but <laughs> but he does that once. <laughs> so uh, I think it's so cute and sweet at the same time. Yeah, I would highly advise going to a birthing class. Hmm. Oh, another thing that has happened is that I started organizing baby's room. I washed some more of the baby clothes. The bookshelf that was in the nursery room is now put in the closet and it's all like kind of organized. I hung up some of the cuter clothes that she had and folded a lot of the clothes that was, uh, Folded a lot of clothes up and put in the little like pulley drawer things since I do not have a dresser yet. We do intend on getting a dresser uh, after the baby shower. So it is exciting to kind of see how stuff is forming in that room. But I'm actually kind of surprised how small the room is now that it looks like it's getting furniture in it because I was given a actual changing table. I had bought a changing pad secondhand for someone that was selling it and they just threw in the changing table and i never intended on getting a changing table because i knew that i wanted the dresser drawer more because probably nine times out of ten in the beginning i might not be using the changing table i might be using the bed since i do plan on having a day bed in the room i didn't want to dedicate a changing table but i wasn't gonna toss away the idea of getting something for free so i took it and now it's like oh lord the room is small so we might end up either a selling it or two putting the changing table in our room since our room is like a really big size room so honestly we can put it in there and see how that works but yeah we're definitely on our way to finally getting the nursery together but um don't want to do too much because we do plan on painting the room so yeah that is that. Oh, one big thing that did happen is that I did notice some blue. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Uh, I had to go because I noticed that my OB was actually calling me or whatnot and I don't remember what I was necessarily talking about. Probably wasn't even that important, but uh, oh no, I think it was. Look at my pregnancy brain not getting the best of me. I was talking about bleeding, child. Um, so I did start spotting, um, yeah, so I did start spotting or whatnot, and it was a situation where I woke up around one o'clock in the morning, me and David had fell asleep on the couch, and before going to the room, I'm like, you know, I need to use the bathroom, like, I'm pregnant, I'm going to use the bathroom, so I went to go use the bathroom, and I wiped, and I see, like, three spots of blood, then I do it again, it sucks, but so I take the tissue, ram it up there, sit there for a second, brought it out. It was like blood on it. So I was like, oh crap, Jesus, Jesus, be a fence. <laughs> Jesus, be a fence because I do not need no signs of labor. But um, so I did that maybe about seven, eight more times each time there's blood on it. Now when I say there's blood on it, it wasn't like gushing blood or soaking pad blood, but it was like every time I wiped, there was blood there. So I would sit it on it, take it off, there was blood there. So I'm like, oh crap, because the one of the things that was adamant from my fetal medicine doctor was that no, no blood. Any blood, that's a problem. No blood at all, nothing. Call the doctor. So when I seen that, I got a little nervous. Called the doctor, which was the on-call doctor, and she pretty much told me to keep an eye on it, and I could go to triage, but honestly, I didn't want to go to triage. Um, I thought that if anything was wrong, it would continually progress. 
So we just pretty much came up to the agreement that we were going to watch it, see if the spotting continues to happen. Uh, like I said, it was one o'clock in the morning. So I said if by nine o'clock in the morning, if I'm continuously bleeding, then I would go to triage. So uh, the next day, I only seen like a little bit of blood. Oh, also I did have a doctor's appointment that next morning. So I was like, cool, if anything happened, I'll go see the OB in the morning. So I only seen a little bit of blood in the morning. I went to the OB's office and kind of told them what happened. Uh, the doctor decided to do a cervical check, which I was like, I thought I was running away from these cervical checks, but nope, I didn't. So she did a cervical check. She said I wasn't dilated and that she didn't see any blood. She said, I'm not gonna worry about it because your body's not worried about it. So once your body start worrying about it, that's when I start worrying about it. I was like, cool, checkmate. So then she decided to check the baby's heartbeat, which was at 131, which is perfect. Uh, she did check the growth of my stomach. She told me that I was in the 36th percentile of baby size. I don't know what half the stuff mean, but she said as far as baby size and where you are at, you are in the 36th percentile. So she just said slightly below in, in weight, but pretty much perfectly fine. I also got my 32 weeks lab done, which uh, my doctor just called me back just now to tell me that everything was fine except for my iron level so syphilis and all that and hrv i am in the clear so she just emailed me what iron pills to get so i need to get on the ball with that so i guess that is pretty much it with everything that has gone on with me and my body and life child so i guess we can go ahead and start reading what happened in my 30 and 31 week with baby on the pregnancy plus app as well as I guess I can tell you what the pregnancy uh, app says in size and then we can go ahead and measure the belly. So they said between 29 and 32 weeks, baby size is the size of a winter squash. I live in Florida. I don't know what a winter squash look like. So is a winter squash everywhere? Is that only in cold places? I don't know, but you know, a winter squash. Says your baby is now able to see, even though it's dark inside your uterus, the eyes are wide open and scoping out the environment. That is really weird. Your baby's brain is growing rapidly due to which it will not gain much weight or height this week. Red blood cells are now forming in your baby's bone marrow. Your baby's hair is actually going thicker at this point. Fluid is now present in the air sacs inside the lungs to help your little one take its first breath. Your baby begins to position itself to birth anytime from now on. She is already ready, child. So that is 30 weeks. So at 31 weeks, it says your baby weight is about 3.5. You already know that she is bigger than that. And fat continues to accumulate under the skin. While your baby can gain as much weight as a half a pound a week from now until birth, the weight gain varies from baby to baby. Uh, the body hair is continuing to shed. Although babies born prematurely may still have some of this at birth. Even though the lungs are the last of all the organs to develop fully, your baby is practicing breathing 30 to 40% of the time. Bones are busy hardening and preparing to support your baby's body at birth. The adrenal glands, which produce those important hormones called steroids, have doubled in size in the last 10 weeks. Steroids are responsible for growth and development of the sex organ. Uh, one thing I forgot to show you, which you will see in the thumbnail, is what the ultrasound looked like. We finally got somewhat of a face picture, and this is what she looks like and in the womb. So we know she got my nose. Look at that. <laughs> it is fat or whatnot and that is her little eye sockets this is probably not the size it looks because you look at this one uh this is a little more accurate but we know that she has big lips because we could tell when we actually was looking at the 4d ultrasound that she had 
huge lips <laughs> uh also you can see in this top one too so that is kind of what she looking like she look like she's gonna be a little chubby cheek baby uh, this one looks a little bit more weird than this one, but now that we have done read about the baby Let's go ahead and measure her. This is what she is looking like I Feel like a little a little more brown skin child. We are looking like let me go to the side Pull it tight There you go. You can see that she is a little bit lower if you see like my pelvic bone or whatever, you can really see how much she is like down there. <laughs> like she is down there, child. So last time we was around that, I think 41 or 41 and a quarter, I believe. So let's see what she had. Now let me relax my stomach. Cause I naturally squeeze in. Quarter in this, it looked like I lost a couple of inches. Let me see my back. Look like I'm 40 and a half. According to this. Am I tripping? I'm under 41. That's crazy. Is that possible? I'm almost 40 inches. So am I losing weight? Uh, yep. Almost 40 inches. It is what it is, child. She healthy. So, yeah, I guess that's gonna be it for this particular video. I thought it was gonna be a lot longer, child. I thought I was gonna be talking my head off, but that is actually a good thing that I don't think and I hope and fingers crossed that it's not too long, but I did warn y'all in the beginning of the video. So if you haven't already, just make sure you have liked this video. Comment down below if you have anything that you want to say. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Oh, by the way, we are in the 2000 game. That is so crazy. Oh my gosh. Like we are at 2000, 2000, 2000 subscribers that is actually amazing and i feel so 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 blessed so blessed like it's so much has been going on and i've been wanting to address uh everything as far as uh the support that i've been getting but y'all know i'm trying to get through this pregnancy you know what i'm saying and then post out these videos but i really really want to thank you guys for supporting the channel so yeah, I just wanted to make sure I said that. And I guess that is it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Just say free black young Lady Woods in the morning. R.I.P. your mom.